morning and welcome to our worship. This is the Sunday that lies between Ascension last Thursday and Pentecost next Sunday. Between Jesus returning to his Father and the Holy Spirit coming into the world to direct and encourage believers in the risen Christ. Let us turn to Christ now in prayer based on Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and cover us with the radiance of grace. May your way be known everywhere, O God, in the hidden places of our hearts, in the comfort of our homes, in every corner of our world, in the farthest reaches of creation. You transform us, you heal our lives, you renew the earth and every creature. Let our praise for you shake the rafters with songs of joy. And so we turn to one of those songs of joy, the hymn, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. in his presence of what it is that we have done wrong or omitted to do in our lives. And so this is our chance to come to him in penitence and faith. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways 
and the unrighteous their thoughts. Turn back to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us, according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Lord who has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will be our praise to God. We pray the collect for this Sunday. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so now we have our readings. Today's reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6. To 14. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back to you in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill they called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James's son, Alphaeus and Simon the Zealite, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today's reading is John 17, 1 to 11. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 17, beginning to read at verse 1. Jesus prays to be glorified. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave to me, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world begun. I have revealed to you those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, for I gave them words you gave me, and they accepted them. They know with certainty that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, and the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wonder what having a glorious summer means to you. For some it will be a long break somewhere wonderfully warm and sunny. New adventures, exploring distant lands, family gatherings or long walks in beautiful countryside. For others, a glorious summer should include the sound of leather on willow and casting our minds back to the glories of, say, a famous Ashes victory or a famously exciting World Cup win. Many of us may be struggling with the inability to live those dreams this year and that's okay. It's okay not to be okay. Yes, really. Talking about the glories of the past can help, but so can looking for new joys closer to home or realising that there may be others hidden within ourselves. Graham and I have resorted to looking for the glories of summer closer to home, so the garden, unsurprisingly, has been the focus of our attention. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we were given the glorious sight of a pair of large red damselflies on a tiny two-year-old garden pond. The school lunch break felt foreshortened as we watched excitedly while they mated and laid eggs. Filigree thin, translucent wings holding them together despite a stiff breeze. A brief encounter with the glory of God, carried by his creation, that set us up for the rest of the day. Glory. Even in the best of times, our encounters with glory seem all too brief. But they need not be, for we are ourselves the residing place of the ultimate glory, God's love for his disciples. We too carry God's glory. In our gospel this morning, we eavesdrop on John's account of some of Jesus' prayerful musings over his purpose here on earth, shortly before his crucifixion and resurrection. He dwells in particular on his relationship with God and the relationship of God with his disciples. And the word glory crops up a lot. If we think carefully about the glories of sport or nature, we can see that they are both relational and transactional. By that I mean that we give and receive some benefit in the process of whatever glory we've been drawn to. At a famous sporting occasion we find ourselves wrapped up in the excitement, unified at the very least with other supporters of our team, and with the effort and struggle of the players themselves, including in the euphoria the euphoria of a victory parade when it comes. A quiet encounter 
with insects or other wildlife is vastly different. But if we've borne any responsibility for the creation of the habitat they've chosen to visit, or can relate to the struggle to survive and reproduce, or the gift of any future generations of that species which may grace us with their presence in future, then we are definitely building a relationship of sorts with them. There is a giving and a receiving. However, even if we're inspired by either of these examples to change our lifestyles, we aren't ourselves glorified in the process. That honour does lie latent within us, but comes alive only through faith in Jesus and continues with the journey of discipleship within the Christian faith. When Jesus makes the revealing request that God glorify him, the Son, as he is about to glorify the Father, the purposefulness of his commitment to that glorious relationship holds the pain of sacrifice and of grief that is far greater than anything we see on a sports field or indeed in creation. Neither is it entered into for their own sakes, for the fulfilment of the dreams of a team or a nation, or for the procreation of the next generation. Theirs is the glory that existed before the world began, as John puts it in this passage and in the first chapter of his Gospel. And yet amazingly, it exists now, in this world, in Christ's disciples, in us. On Thursday we marked Ascension Day, which, to my mind at least, was in earthly terms, the euphoric victory procession of the winning team as Jesus returned home to the presence of his Father. But the relationship of God with his disciples then and now was to reach completion with the coming of another, the Spirit of Truth, promised by Jesus in John 14, for which the disciples would wait and pray following his ascension. Pentecost would be the point from which the glory of God would dwell in and shine forth from his disciples as their witness in word and deed to the love of God for the world. For as we pray thy kingdom come in these nine days between ascension and Pentecost, we are praying that we ourselves, and others for whom we bear witness to God, can experience the indwelling of God's glorious love within us, perhaps for the first time, perhaps afresh. Remembering that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the glorious image of God is especially important. This year, perhaps particularly so. More than in the past and hopefully more than will be required in future years. For those of us struggling to cope with any emotional darkness triggered by the shattered dreams of the glorious summer that we had planned, yes, we can look for it in encounters closer to home. But it's also helpful to recognise that the very yearning we find so painful at this time is the glory of God within us seeking a way out. The love 
for which we were made to be in relationship with God, and which we so miss giving and receiving with others in so many different ways at this time, is God's unending love. It is a healthy thing to admit and talk of the struggle that exists within us when we feel we can't let his glory shine fully in our relationship with God and with others, when we can't at this time fully live out the calling God has placed on our lives. As we wait and pray for Pentecost this year, for the spirit of truth to be doing her glorious work in the world, may we acknowledge and commit to bearing witness to the pain of what it means for us as God's disciples. And as we do so, be willing to listen to others and help them recognise through faith in Jesus the beauty of that glory which they carry within themselves. Father, in your Son Jesus Christ you share your life with our life. Unite your church in the vitality that it may witness to your truth. Keep hold of your church and treasure those whom you call by name. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I do not know when we can gather again in worship, Lord. So for now, I just ask that when I read the news and my heart tightens in my chest, may it be counted as a Kyrie. And that when my eyes brighten and a smile behind my mask as I thank the cashier, may it be counted as passing the peace. And that when I water my plants and wash my dishes and take a shower, may it be counted as remembering my baptism. And that when the tears come and my shoulders shake and my breathing falters, may it be counted as prayer. And that as I sit at that table in my apartment and eat one more homemade meal, slowly, joyfully, with, with nothing else demanding my time or attention, may it be counted as communion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son expanded the narrow vision of his disciples enlarge the scope of our concern to embrace people of all nations and heritages. Keep us watchful against all that would devour the weak and vulnerable. Hear the cry of all who cast their anxiety on your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who grow, harvest, produce and transport our food that everyone will be fed. Help us to be mindful of our own consumption so that there is nourishment for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in difficult relationships. We ask that help is available in sufficiency to enable them to be supported and protected. Help us to communicate with those around us so that misunderstandings are dealt with quickly and our relationships reflect your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your glory unites earth and heaven. Gather to yourself the faithful departed. May they rise in glory and be in your perpetual light. Grant eternal life to all children of your possession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And finally, be made one by the power of the Spirit, and as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just before our final song this morning, a couple of things for me. Firstly, just a reminder that this afternoon is Messy Church. We'd love to see you there if you are able to. Um, 4.30 on Zoom. Bring along some pens, pencils, um, some craft bits and bobs and uh, you'll be able to join in. Whatever age you are, we'd love to see you this afternoon. Do stay after the service and join us on Zoom again for coffee. We'd love to see a few new faces. If you haven't tried joining us for coffee on Zoom yet, why not give it a go? And um, lots of people are finding it a really helpful way of meeting and engaging with each other. This coming week is our week of prayer. We're praying thy kingdom come, inviting God to have his way in our world. And we're asked to pray for some of our friends who don't yet know Jesus to come and to meet him for themselves. On Thursday, we've got our special day of prayer. There's our slots available to sign up and pray at home. I'd love to have some more people join us for that. But we're also doing morning prayer, both on the Thursday and the Friday. And we've got our prayer and praise at eight o'clock on the Thursday evening. 
please do join us for those as well. receive God's blessing on our lives and his commission to go out into the world in whatever way we can find in these unusual times. Go out into the world and in your words and in your lives bear witness to the Christ who has ascended to be everywhere present. And as you come to know him, may God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May Christ Jesus lift up his hands and bless you. And may the spirit open to you all the riches of Christ's inheritance. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each of you watching today. 
in your homes and in your families, however far apart they are, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.